Good afternoon. My name is Jamie Waterfield, and I'm your host for today's webinar focused on elevating meetings with Microsoft Teams. A few logistics before we get started. Today's webinar is a Teams live event. Attendees are muted but can interact via the Q&A. Michael Dupree is our moderator today. He will either respond to questions in the Q&A window if appropriate, or he will promote them to our presenters to respond live before the conclusion of our webinar. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted to YouTube within the next few days. You will receive a link to the recording when available, should you want to revisit the webinar or share it with your peers. Joining me today are Sean Flahey, our Senior Practice Director, and Sue McGuire, Senior Director for Business Strategy and Transformation. Together, we will be covering a little bit about APEX, common challenges and trends with meetings in today's modern workplace, key features of Microsoft Teams, specifically designed to enhance the before, during, and after meeting experience, best practices to ensure a positive end user experience with Teams meetings, an overview of Teams room systems, as well as the Teams roadmap, and how Apex Digital Solutions is helping our customers with the adoption of Teams meetings. So as you can tell, we have an action-packed agenda, so we better get started. Apex Digital Solutions has been serving the Metro Detroit area for over 20 years with the purpose of empowering people to make a positive difference in the lives of others. We provide professional and managed services around a broad portfolio of Microsoft solutions. And we're also a reseller of Microsoft licensing and devices such as the Microsoft Surface, Surface Hub, and many of the devices in Microsoft's partner ecosystem, including the Teams Rooms systems that we will be discussing later in our presentation. With over 350 customers and 450 cloud deployments, we're proud of maintaining our focus on high standards. Our world-class MPS scores are consistently above 80, while we average around 99% in our customer SAT ratings. I'd now like to introduce Sue McGuire to dive into Microsoft Teams meetings. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it. Meetings are the cornerstone of much of the work that we're doing. We're so dependent on each other to achieve our shared goals, and we will inevitably get, gather together to connect, align, and drive progress. Employees are spending 30% of their time in meetings, and busy professionals are attending over 60 meetings per month. We are now seeing an increased number of remote attendees, where 56% of a meetings that are occurring have at least one remote attendee, and 38% of those people are joining via mobile devices. Giving all that, I'm, I'm sure you can really relate to Dilbert's experience here in this comic strip. With the number of meetings and participants today, there are a great opportunity for noise to arise. That noise can come in the form of unprepared attendees, distractions that are caused by late attendees, the digital distractions with phones and tablets, attendees not feeling included, and even the lack of follow through after a meeting. That noise can result in really ineffective meetings. In a recent commissioned report by Microsoft, they found that meetings fit into five meeting types. And nearly 50% of these meetings are either status or collaborative meetings, which have that a higher level of engagement or collaboration. Across all of these meeting types, they report that most people, at least 60%, are walking away stressed or feeling unsatisfied with those meetings. And 50% of the find that those meetings are truly unproductive. The contributors to those stresses are not just the noise that I spoke about earlier, but also the challenges with managing the information flow before, during, and after meetings, such as we have difficulty electronically sharing information during meetings, and remote users are often left feeling isolated or unable to follow along. People who miss the meetings don't get the content of, or a summary of the meeting afterwards and so are missing valued context. Or worse, the attendees are unable to find the content, including summary, key takeaway, and action items after the meeting is over. 
in the past, the number one tool for meetings was Outlook and was really focused on scheduling only. Today's meetings are requiring so much more. We need tools to improve the overall experience and effectiveness of meetings. These tools need to support things such as content sharing, taking notes, whether it's meeting notes or having a whiteboard available, and then document collaborating. We're here to discuss how teams can support these modern needs and help overcome the challenges that we face with meetings. Today's attendee needs to be able to connect to meetings regardless of their location or device. And more importantly, they need to have that consistent experience across these devices, screens, sizes, or even the platforms that they're connecting from. Meetings need to be joined on a PC or a Mac, mobile, from the web, from conference rooms, and even via desk phone. Microsoft Teams provides access to Teams meetings across devices wherever you're at, at home, in the office, or on the go. And with Teams, you can collaborate directly via your mobile device with screen share, live camera feed, and PowerPoint presentations as well. To get the most out of your Teams experience, I'm gonna hit on some of the features that you can make use of throughout the meeting cycle. Before the meeting, utilizing Teams meeting scheduling via Outlook or directly from Teams provides you that visibility of participant and conference room schedules using the scheduling assistant. You can also initiate meetings immediately using the, the Meet Now feature. Prior to the start of meetings, you can begin the communication to share files, chat about items related to the meeting, and even begin notes for the meeting without even having the meeting get started. To ensure that your meeting is productive, participants can Prepare ahead of time by reviewing previous meeting content and action items, collaborating on documents and presentations, and getting more context with who will be attending the meeting. Using the chat with participants option on the meeting invite, meeting organizer and attendees can access, get access to all of this information tied to the meeting itself. Once the meeting begins, people can use a variety of features to help focus attention, drive engagement, and foster inclusion, such as using the high fidelity audio and video with distraction free background using that blur background feature. Live captions and translations are also available. You can share content and use co authoring on the meeting itself, and you also have access to a digital whiteboard. Meetings can, be captured, meetings can be captured through meeting recording feature and notes can happen real time using the meeting notes feature. Document co-authoring allows multiple members to be contributing in the same document in real time. Do you need to visually share a concept or an idea during the meeting? Using the integrated Microsoft whiteboard, participants can contribute and share in real time with digital ink and the whiteboard feature. You can participate from anywhere and it's like you were there in the room. Oops, sorry, you guys went ahead of me. <laughs> if you're having a hard time hearing and need the meeting in another language, the live captions and language translation feature helps you follow along with the meeting itself. Next slide, please. After the meeting, all of the meeting assets, including recording, chat, notes, the digital whiteboard and files are saved in a persistent conversation that helps the team continue the discussion and drive your work forward. Nothing is getting lost in the tracks, in the, in the cracks. As you can see, the features available in team provide numerous ways to be more effective collaborators. However, it's still important considerations when incorporating teams meetings into daily lives of our our team members and that's the people themselves here are a few key actions to improve adoption of teams meetings that you should consider don't just focus on meetings themselves instead continue to build people's knowledge and skills in teams in general microsoft teams is truly the collaboration hub for your organization 
it brings together all the information, people, and experiences into one place. While these features are available in Teams meetings, learning how to make use of them of these same features and functions throughout Teams will drive your efficiencies, improve your collaborative behavior. Developing a champions group to advocate for the use of Teams is also very helpful. They can lead by example, demonstrating through personal experience and commitment how to use the tools themselves. Champions can envision and drive utilization with teams and organization itself and reduce the resistance and stress of change. Soliciting feedback constantly is also important. After meetings, ask people how it went, what worked, what was a struggle, etc. Feedback doesn't need to always be formal. You just need to ask and talk to people about the experience. You'll be surprised what you can learn through those conversations. Supporting and encouraging the use of vid video meetings is also important. The key to inclusion and in teamwork is our ability to see, not just hear. People are inherently uneasy about being on camera, and it's important for us to demystify that and encourage everyone to be present and vis visible. It's, it improves the understanding teamwork and it also helps to avoid distractions. I figure if I'm on camera, I need to be present and paying attention and not off looking at my phone. Create opportunities to use Teams meetings through setting examples, having an entire team switch to using Teams and doing team meetings, initiating some type of gamification feature so that people can start using Teams and are motivated to do that. Switching existing meetings to Teams meetings are just a few ways that you can help create those opportunities. And don't forget to use the Meet Now feature for instant meetings. We have discussed a variety of features and methods to make your, teams, your team meetings more successful. Beyond the meetings themselves, having conference rooms that work seamlessly with these tools are important. I'm gonna turn it over to Sean so that he can talk to you about how to do that. Thanks, Sue. First question um, we're gonna talk about is, what is a Microsoft Teams room or MTR for short? You may hear MTR used uh, in some marketing material from Microsoft, or maybe if you're looking at blog posts uh, about this, you'll see MTR used as an acronym quite a bit. Um, but what is it? It's simply a room enabled for Teams usage. Uh, as Sue mentioned, there's uh, multiple ways to join Teams meetings. You can join on your phone, on your desktop, via web. But you also, you know, when you're in the office, most of your meetings happen in conference rooms. So we want those to be uh, Teams enabled as well. Um, but when we're talking about a Microsoft Teams room system, this is simply the room equipment and technology that has specifically been designed to join Teams meetings that gets installed in your, in your organization's conference rooms. Uh, when we're talking about the specific equipment, uh, a few common room components are included, such as the camera, the speakers, and the microphones. Uh, but all of these components will tie back to a single compute device, which is a Windows 10 PC. Uh, typically, this will be a small form factor PC that can be mounted under a table or inside a credenza or maybe even behind the TV or display sometimes. Uh, and some of the models that are used are an Intel NUC, HP Slice, or a Lenovo small form factor PC. The Windows 10 PC will then run a, a, an app called the Microsoft Teams Room app. Uh, it's a Windows Store app uh, that will uh, is always on. It, it, as soon as you boot up this Microsoft Teams Room system, it, that app automatically starts, and that's what the users will see on the touch panel. Uh, you can see there in the picture, uh, right on the table there is uh, the touch panel that you can use to join and control your meetings. Uh, we'll touch a little bit more about that in a second here. Um, and those touch panels can either be uh, on the table or they can also be mounted to a wall. Um, so various different setups for that. Um, also want to call out that these Teams room systems can be used uh, via HDMI to connect to various displays. Uh, you can either use a single TV, a dual display, dual, di dual display TV or two TVs, um, and they can also connect to projectors in larger rooms as well. Um, but the purpose of these Microsoft Teams room systems is really to, to provide a consistent meeting experience regardless of the room size. So it could be anywhere from a small huddle room all the way up to a large conference room or boardroom. Uh, any time you walk into uh, these rooms, uh, the experience should be the same 
uh, regarding a Teams meeting. Here we can see some of the devices that can be used uh, in a Microsoft Teams enabled room. Uh, all of these devices are considered Teams certified. What Teams certified means is that these devices have been rig rigorously tested by a third party to ensure the highest audio and video experience with Microsoft Teams. Microsoft works with these uh, third party vendors to create these Teams certified devices and they create various models such as room systems, conference room phones, and also personal devices as well to join meetings. Personal devices can be anywhere from a headset or a desk phone as well. I wanna call out the top row here. Uh, as you can see, there are a few different vendors that provide these Microsoft Teams room systems, Logitech, Crestron, HP, and a Lenovo to name a few. Now that we've covered the devices and hardware, I wanna talk about what is the real benefit of a Teams enabled room. As we said before, regardless of a PC or vendor or hardware combination, the intent is for a Teams meeting room experience to be uh, similar or the same. Many times we've all uh, seen when we walk into a room for a meeting and where maybe we may be unfamiliar with the equipment in the room or the displays and we may spend five or 10 minutes fumbling around with how to turn the TV on or how to get the input to where we want it to be, um, how to turn on speakers and cameras, or maybe there's an instruction manual posted somewhere in the room that we have to read through uh, and follow the instructions that way. The experience from a Teams enabled room is one touch join. When we schedule a meeting uh, via our Outlook and we, we invite the room, uh, the intent is we walk into the meeting room, go to the touch panel, we should see our meeting already posted there and we just click the join button. When we click the join button, the TV, the camera, the speakers and all the micro and the microphones all become active right away and the room is then joined into the Teams meeting. Um, this is a nice experience um, when we have scheduled meetings, um, but there's also, uh, as Sue mentioned before, there's sometimes ad hoc meetings where we may be sitting in a, in a conference room and we may not be in a specifically scheduled meeting, uh, maybe a, a quick uh, huddle. Um, so there's times when we can use the meet now feature um, to, to create an ad hoc meeting in a Teams room. But when we're using that meet now feature to create an ad hoc meeting, we still want the, want the room to be able to join into the meeting as well to utilize the camera, the microphone and the speaker capabilities. Um, and that's where we a feature called the proximity based meeting join comes into play, as you can see there on the right hand side. If you're on, if you're on a PC uh, or mobile phone and you're joining a Teams meeting, um, there is a proximity sensor inside these Teams room systems that detects when you're close to it. Um, so if I'm sitting in a conference room and I'm joining a Teams or starting up a Teams meeting for my laptop, it'll recognize that I'm already in a Microsoft Teams room. And when I go to join, it will ask me if I want to add the room to the meeting. Um, you can see there in the screenshot that little pop up is, is uh, letting you know say hey you're, you're by a room let's go ahead and add it when you click that button uh the on the on the touch panel itself of the room it'll it'll ask if you want to accept the incoming meeting invitation this is important as you know bluetooth uh, proximity join you don't want uh, other people just randomly joining your room or your meeting so that's where it'll it'll has to you have to uh, actually accept the request uh, on the room system itself at that time, once the room is joined into the meeting, your PC or your mobile app will automatically go into content only mode, meaning your audio and video on your laptop and your mobile phone will be off. This is important so you don't get any meeting echo or feedback uh, to the other clients on the meeting or the room. And again, I mentioned this is a Bluetooth feature, so Bluetooth uh, is always a Bluetooth, Bluetooth beacon is always being emitted from the meeting room system and Bluetooth uh, must be enabled on your phone or on the laptop for this to work. So as you can see, these are two, su two super simple ways to join a Teams meeting uh, when you're in a Teams room. This next slide I wanna call out here is, um, we, we mentioned there's uh, Teams room systems available for many different room sizes and layouts, anywhere from small huddle rooms to medium rooms to long boardrooms with long tables and other odd furniture configurations. 
Um, these uh, Teams room systems with their modular approach can be installed in many different room sizes. Many vendors uh, that create these Teams room systems like Logitech and Crestron, for example, they will offer up diagrams of each of these room sizes that will help you choose which cameras, which speakers and mics to install, as well as how to wire it all up uh, to make the room look nice. Make sure when you're planning out the installation of these Teams rooms to take advantage of these wiring and install diagrams during the planning and install phases. Uh, especially during the planning phase, you may need to involve other external parties such as your facilities team or an external AV vendor to run these cables. Um, so make sure that they, uh, those parties are aware of these diagrams as well. Um, but again, this just reaffirms that uh, no matter the scenario, room size, room layout, the idea behind Teams meetings is to have a similar experience across all devices and layouts. Um, moving from rooms back to Teams meeting in general, um, this slide calls out just some of the constant innovation and feature updates that are being released for Teams and Teams meetings. Um, however, before I get into all the new uh, nice uh, features, I want to call out one of the most popular features of Teams meetings, which is audio conferencing. Audio conferencing is the ability to add a phone number and a conference ID to a Teams meeting so that anyone can dial in from a cell phone or a landline if they can't join via their PC. This is a common conference bridge feature that's uh, existed for a long time. Um, specifically, this audio conferencing within Microsoft Teams, this feature is, an, is available uh, in 90 plus countries. Um, so if you have an existing conference service today and plan to use Teams for your meeting solution, Make sure to take a look at that. You may be able to save some money along with consolidating to a single solution in Microsoft Teams for both uh, your web meeting solution as well as your audio conferencing as well. Moving on to some of the new features coming soon to Teams meetings. I'm not going to rattle off all the features on the slide. There's quite a bit here. I just want to call out two specifically um, that are coming soon, one being live captions. Um, maybe someone uh, is attending a meeting in an area uh, that's hard to hear, or maybe English is not your first language. Um, if, if live captions are on and are during a meeting, you can follow along um, as this, if it's closed caption or live caption of the meeting. Um, I've been testing this out in, in the preview features, and it, it actually works really, really well, um, and it, it picks up on a lot of the grammar as well. Other feature is multi-window. Uh, this is a feature that's coming soon. This will allow you to split out your video window and a content window into separate windows. Um, you know, when you're joined on a meeting on your PC, uh, this will be nice um, to allow for uh, an easier experience to, to read and keep track of everything that's going on in the meeting if you're joining remotely. So these are just two of the uh, new features that I'm uh, really excited about, and I know they're going to make the meeting experience even better with Teams. Great, thank you so much to uh, Sue and Sean. I know that I can't imagine going back to a meeting experience without Teams. Um, I've been really impressed at the pace of innovation coming from the Microsoft Teams product team. And, uh, you know, Sean walked through some of those Teams meetings features, um, but as a platform as a whole, there's just a, a tremendous roadmap ahead that uh, we're really excited about sharing with our customers. As we wrap up today's webinar, I wanna take just a few minutes to share with you how Apex Digital Solutions is engaging with customers around Microsoft Teams. We have a breadth of professional and managed services that support our customers at each phase throughout that technology life cycle. So whether you're in the early envisioning and strategy phase, or you've selected the solution and are preparing for implementation, or perhaps you're constrained within your team to support and manage the environment, our Ready, Ignite, and Empower offers are designed to help you achieve your desired outcomes. More importantly, we weave best practice elements of project and change management throughout our customer engagements to help ensure that you're realizing that return on investment. If you're currently evaluating Microsoft Teams meetings and Teams room systems, our Ready for Teams meetings assessment and planning workshop would be worth considering as a next step in your journey. Just last month, Apex Digital Solutions was selected by Microsoft to help validate a Teams meetings solution accelerator. So alongside Microsoft, we delivered the very first Teams meetings workshop 
to a mutual customer as part of the Microsoft Teamwork Assessment Program. This two and a half day engagement is designed to help customers understand and experience the vision of Teams meetings and meeting rooms, and also to understand um, your customer business priorities, scenarios that drive modern meeting transformation. So we'd be happy to discuss this offer further with you as a follow-up to today's webinar. You can contact your Apex Digital Solutions account executive or reach out directly to me, jwaterfield at apexdigital.com. That concludes our presentation for today. I'll now check in with our moderator, Michael, and see if there's any questions in the Q&A. Hello, yes. Um, so Kirsten asked, uh, what is the advantage of, uh, of Microsoft Teams over Skype? Uh, she saw that uh, the co there's co-authoring, but what are some other key advantages over the other platform? Yeah, this is Sean. I'll take that one. Um, so I want to uh, mention that Microsoft Teams is the direct replacement for Skype for Business online. Skype for Business um, online will be being de is being deprecated on July 31st of 2021. Um, so a lot of those features um, that we see in uh, Skype today are also available in Microsoft Teams. But that being said, you know Skype was originally designed to be an on-premises meetings and uh, voice and collaboration solution. Um, and that was ported to Office 365 a few years ago when it was when Office 365 was was rolled out. Um, but there there have, there have been some issues, um, you know, in the past with with Skype for Business, especially when you have a Skype meeting and you're inviting people that are external to your organization. They have to download a um, an installer, and you know maybe their firewall was blocking them um, from being able to join the meeting. So there was always an issue with with external people joining your Skype meetings. With Teams, um, that uh, you know team, Teams and in, in general has been built from the cloud up. It's completely been re-engineered. It's a brand new platform um, that was built on Office 365, and it's it's made to make the experience much smoother for all attendees, not just internal people, but external people as well. Um, so if you have an external person that's joining a meeting, they click the join teams meeting button. They can join from their browser. They're not asked to join to install any uh, little plugins or anything like that. Uh, they can just join straight away. Hey, Sean, if I can add just a couple of things as well, um, just in general, in terms of the experience, um, having uh, the background blur on video and those types of features really kind of help uh, to eliminate distractions of your environment. And um, I've also noticed that uh, when joining, it will auto mute you if you're joining into a, a large meeting. So it does some of the thinking for you. And one of my favorite features is while uh, in Teams meetings, it will recognize if you're talking, but you have your mute on, and it will give you a reminder that says you're muted. Do you want to unmute? And, and for those of us that forget we're muted, those are super helpful as well. And then also one of the things that we find is, is most helpful is the persistence of the notes and chat and files that are shared during meetings as well. Is, is that is a much better experience for people and being able to go back and find information associated with meetings is, is useful to being able to carry on uh, the information sharing. I see another question in the chat here. Does Teams have a Kanban board solution? So um, there's a, a tool from Microsoft called Microsoft Planner um, that allows for, it's a note card based, um, task management solution um, that is nice for uh, uh, small teams uh, to manage their tasks. Um, Planner uh, plugs right into a Microsoft team as a tab um, and you can um, use it right, right within the context of a team. Um, I should also mention that Microsoft Teams has integrations with many third-party uh, solutions. So if, if it's not specifically from Microsoft, maybe you use a third-party Kanban solution. Um, the, when you go into Microsoft Teams, you can add a tab or you can add an app. Um, and uh, I've seen other other solutions such as uh, Trello or other task management based solutions um, that can be added straight away uh, into the team as well. 
All right, great. Thank you, Sean. I don't see any additional Q&A. We'll just give it a minute if there are any other questions. All right. Well, we will continue on here. I want to thank you again for your time. Uh, we hope that you found it valuable. Your feedback is very important to us, uh, so we will be sending a short survey following the event. Uh, within the next day, you'll receive the survey, a link to the recording, and we would appreciate any response uh, so we can continue to improve these sorts of, of webinars and learning opportunities um, and deliver value to our customers. So I'm going to wish you a wonderful rest of your day and hope to speak with you soon. Thank you.